Chris, you can start when Angela says we're ready. We're ready to go. <clears throat> so good afternoon or good evening. Um, thank you for taking the time to dial in today. Uh, my name's Chris Barrett. Um, here with Fleet Stocker, we're going to run through some tools and solutions we have for cat productivity, site productivity, and some application that we're going to run through today. Um, I'm based here in Melbourne, um, as to as for each. Uh, I cover the technology products on the Caterpillar construction machines. And good morning, good afternoon, Felice. How are you today? Good morning, afternoon to you, Chris. How are you going? All right. I'm going very well. Okay, what are we up to? Well, I think for each today, let's um cover off on the cat performance handbook. So I know there's a lot of customers out there that have got these in their offices that they still use to bid jobs. Let's um let's just go through some of the quick 101s on how to use that performance handbook. We'll then get into a tool that we use on some products, which is production analysis or also known as FPC. Um, we'll cover off later on on an application you can use on your smartphone, the cat cycle timer, and a new application to bring all this payload data and productivity data together in our new uh, online application being cat productivity fleet. So let's have a look at a bit of a, a job site um, study or a scenario that a customer may present to us. Sure. So we're going to compare and just in case we have an issue here, Chris, because um, I'm i getting this Wi-Fi issue coming up on my laptop here, so hopefully you guys can all hear me okay. But we are going to compare the Caterpillar Performance Handbook, which is obviously there on the left-hand side, versus the software that pulls the information from the Performance Handbook, and that is our FPC fleet production and cost analysis. So typical scenario here for each, we're working with the customer, the dealer rep, um, calls in the application specialist to say, hey, we've got a customer here. He's just purchased a new uh, 349 next gen excavator, mass hex configuration, 3.2 cubic meter bucket from an observation uh, from being on site. They've observed a 15 second cycle time average. Um, the loading is 745. There's three of them on site, about a nine pass load. Information that we've been provided from the customer on this job site, it's a one kilometer downhill average grade of eight to nine degrees. Um, as you know, for each we like to work in percent, but we've, we can do that too. The 5% RR, that's the rolling resistance. So what those ground conditions are looking like. On this site, working an 11 hour day, key questions are, we want to know how many tons can the fleet move per day? We also want to know, is this the best fleet match for this job? So we've got the loading tool, we've got three trucks. Are we under trucked, over trucked? What's the best way to get the, the most out of this site? So let's take a look at that for each. Sure. So effectively, this is the sort of information that's given to us uh, or the dealer by the customer. And there's some information here that's good, but there's obviously a lot more information that we need. But if we're only given the basics, we've got to start with the basics, and that's going to the performance handbook. And what you can see here in this box that's here, I'm referring to Performance Handbook 49. Now, these editions are free and on our Caterpillar website. Um, and that does refer each year. You can see here that I'm referring to each specific page number where I'm pulling information from. Now, these, the Performance Handbook, are it's a unique book. Um, it's actually now digital, so it's no longer a hard copy. But you can just about get anything you want for productivity and cycle time measurement. Uh, for most products in the performance handbook. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our 349 tonne excavator uh, with the 3.2 cubic metre bucket and using the information the customer provided, which is 15 second average cycle time listed here. So we've gone to page 579 where we're estimating production for excavators. You can see here I've circled 15 seconds, gone across to find the bucket, and you, you can see we don't have to adding that onto this number here, which is 744, which is the lowest number, and that gives us 760 loose cubic metres per hour. That's what it's estimating for that excavator, 760 loose cubic metres per hour. 
Now, to get that into tons, because the customer has recommended tons, we need to know the density of the material. So the customer has provided the density for this mix of clay and stone, which is at 1,500 or 1.5. And you can see here, I've just multiplied that out. And effectively, it's telling us that that machine is capable of just over 1,150 tons per hour. Again, those tables for densities is in the performance handbook, Chris. Yeah, and I guess just to point out there, for each, that's a a table that doesn't take into the machine model, just looking at the bucket size of that machine and your cycle time. So a, a very um, quick view to get an estimated, but we'll soon see what that stacks out to the actual result from the fleet. And we'll get and we'll get to that. So effectively, and also it's not given us the performance of the operator. So if it was me in the machine, Chris, I'd probably be filling the bucket up at eighty percent. If it's you, it's probably ninety five and a half percent. Okay, now we're going to the performance handbook calculations here to get our minus eight to nine degrees to percentage. So you can see over here on page 232 over the performance handbook, we're going to change this grade in degrees and percent. So again, reminder, eight to nine degrees, which we're converting over here, drawn a circle around it, where it's giving us somewhere between 14 and 16 percent. So you can see here I've split the difference and said that we're actually going to say that this truck is going downhill at minus 15% downhill, Chris. Yep, very good. So that's right. just looking at the downhill. Yep. Could we dive in a bit deeper, which I've seen you've got some more tables up here, for which you want to run through what these tables are? Right, so these are performance curves for the 745 articulator truck. And look, one of the... One of the things that we get all the time, so especially for dealer and cat folk that are actually on this call at the moment and potentially customers, is they don't know the difference of whether the truck's going uphill or downhill. So clearly you can see here, we've got a logo of the truck going downhill. Um, but the, the clue here is that obviously this chart says retarder performance curve. So we know the truck is going downhill. Um, and also another clue here is in the brackets here, the word favorable, that's also telling us that we're going downhill. Now, what we do, knowing that it's 15% uh, downhill, we go across to the 15% until we hit the loaded line because we know that it's loaded going downhill. Then we go across till we hit a gear. And effectively, it's in that fifth gear that we can take a speed anywhere from that fifth gear all the way through to sixth gear. So anywhere from 15 to 20 kilometers per hour, but always like to err on the side of caution, Chris and we've gone at 15 kilometers per hour into the 60 minute hour, which is 250 meters per minute. And the maths tells us that's a four minute travel loader time. Very good. Now, for going back uphill, you can see we've got the logo and again, referring to the performance handbook. And here we've got rim pull speed and rolling resistance. So this is telling us that we, this is the table that we're using to go uphill. But this time, what we've done is we've got the 15% uphill plus the 5% rolling resistance. We actually have to add that to this, giving us 20%. Follow the arrow down till we hit the empty line, because obviously it's traveling back empty. Go across to the gear, same scenario. And here we're somewhere between, well, it's probably around 16 kilometers an hour, 17, but you can see if I press uh, enter here, I've just taken 15 kilometers per hour again. And this time, um, the maths here tells us that it's actually a uh, four minute travel time empty here again. So that's that's the travel time, Chris. So what we're doing now is we're just running through the numbers here, lots of numbers here. So we've got the bucket, we've got the density, we know it's 4.8 tonne. We know it's nine passes, that's 43 tonne in that truck. But this time we've got to allow for a fill factor. And obviously I was uh, making light of this situation before, depending on the operator. But we have a table here where we can assume fill factors. And we've gone to sand and gravel here, where we can assume somewhere between 95 and 110%. Again, sticking to the erring on the side of caution here. So we've, we've gone with a 95% fill factor in this sort of material, assuming that the truck is going to be around 41 tonne. Now, there's a couple of phrases here, manoeuvre and load and manoeuvre and dump, that some may or may not be familiar with. So effectively, 
Again, in the performance handbook for hauling units, we've got some numbers here. Now, what manoeuvre and load is, is when a truck passes a designated point, backs up to the loading tool, gets its load, and once that first bucket is dumped into the truck, that's what we call manoeuvre and load. And that can take anywhere between 0.6 and 0.8. There's a fractional minute. So 6 6 is a 36 seconds, and obviously 8 6 is a 48. I've split the difference here and gone for 42 seconds. So the same at the other end, when we want to tip, manoeuvre and dump. Again, typically 1 to 1.2 minutes. You can see I've done the maths here and gone a minute and 12. I've gone a 1.2. So in all, allowing further cycle times, first bucket dump, eight passes, 15 second cycles, and, and the four minute loaded, four minute empty. Effectively, that's telling us that uh, if we flick over to the next page, with all these numbers that are here, we're about an 11 minute and 57 cycle time, Chris, which I rounded off to 12 minutes. Does that make sense to you? It does, and I guess people might be looking, saying there's quite a few calculations here for each, and I guess we'll get into an easy way to do this when you're working with, with your dealership. One of the hardest things to do is look at these numbers and try and make sense of them if you don't have an application uh, specialist with you. Our dealers have them. Obviously, we have them within Caterpillar, and we can break those numbers down in front of the customer to explain it in more detail. 12-minute cycles into a 50-minute hour. Right? We don't uh, we don't profess to run a 60 minute hour. Operators need to have a break, allowing for operator efficiency. Mass here is telling us 4.2 loads per hour. At the 41 tonne, 171 tonne per truck, times the 11 hours, they're saying 1,800 tonnes per day per truck. Multiply that out by the three trucks, and that's going to be 5,676 tonnes per day, Chris. Very good. Let's look at another way. Okay, so the other way is actually now using the software, using FBC, and it's putting in exactly the same information. So now just keep in mind here, I've listed no field observations. And that's for a reason, because we're just running with raw data. Again, haul rate is U minus 15%, rolling resistance of five, and more importantly, no speed limit was provided. Normally that's one of the first questions I ask when I go onto a job site and say, is there a speed limit on site? Here we were not given one. Now, just going to flick through. These are tables that are in the FPC software, Chris. You can see here we've got our whole exchange time of 42 seconds, a three-second first bucket dump, nine passes, 15 seconds per cycle, as suggested by the customer, 95% fill factor. So we're putting all the numbers that was given to us by the customer and some that we estimated ourselves using the performance handbook. You can see the hauling here, Chris, is two minutes and 28 seconds. Now that's obviously a lot faster than what the performance handbook has suggested. And there's a very good reason for that is it's because we have no speed limit. So the software thinks that it can go as fast as it wants to take that load down to its dump area and back again. Very good. And just to point out, for each with this software, the items in white there that you have highlighted, they're the ones you can edit based off observations or custom information to make this tool work. Correct. So as I go through this, uh, I just want to show here that uh, the software has told us that we can go at 9 minutes and 52 seconds to do this, even though the performance handbook has said 11 minutes and 57 seconds. Now, if I was on the job site and we were taking cycle time measurement, and we knew we were getting eight minutes, well, we would adjust these numbers until this was reading eight minutes because I want to be in a position where I'm showing the customer valid data that I've taken on his site. But we don't have that. So we just got to allow the software to assume that. So yes, anything that's white is changeable. All right, you can see a little bit of difference there, Chris. Now, yep. just a re reminder, we have one excavator, three trucks. We're running at 90% operator efficiency we're running 11 hours and the software is telling us three trucks can give us 6,006 6, tonne as compared to the performance handbook of 5,676 tonne, Chris. Interesting. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to escape out of this and I'm going to go to my Google Earth image that just let me know once that's up on the screen there, Chris. I can see that. I can see Australia and New Zealand looking right at us. 
Very good. So what we've done now, Chris, is that we've gone to the job site, we've gone, at, we've got now Garmin GPS out, and we've actually profiled the haul road. So now we have more accurate data. So we'll just click in here and, and, and see where we did this. And actually, we're going to end up focusing in Malaysia because that was a job site that I did a few years ago. And you can see when you see this haul road, you can actually see that it's a lot different to what was originally to what was originally described. So we'll just flick this off again here. So you can see here, this is the loading point and this is the dumping point. So what's happened What's happened here is that uh, it's obviously after going through and seeing this information, there's lots of switchbacks here. Uh, one of the things that, that was accurate, Chris, was that it was actually one kilometer. So that was fine as given to me by the dealer and the customer. But as you'll see, as I go back to the PowerPoint, that there are some significant changes. So I'll just go back to the PowerPoint now. And, and we were told, for each that we had a 15% a grade. So it will be interesting to see from the analysis using the GPS to map that road what we, what we got here. Correct. So what we have here is the one kilometre haul road was OK. Um, you can see the grades vary from minus one to minus 20% downhill. So there was there was a big difference, not the 15. So it averages out to minus one or minus 20. Now, we said the customer told us it was 11 hour total hours, but when we we're on site and we spoke to the customer, that, that number actually came back to 10 because we had to allow for start up and shut down. So there was one hour difference there. So after extensive cycle time measurement on site using the CAT cycle timer that I know you're going to allude to later on in the presentation, the 15 second cycles actually came back to 13. So the person that gave us the data was doing the operators a disservice because, or an injustice, because they're actually faster, a lot faster than the 15. So I would consider that to be quite a confident operator at 13 second cycles. Hall road observations, I agreed with the 5% rolling resistance. However, uh, the software didn't allow for bunching, but we have now included. Now bunching is basically an efficiency factor. When two trucks pass each other, it's human instinct that they slow down. It's human instinct that they may even stop and talk to each other. That's what we call bunching. No matter what supervisors do on site, bunching will always occur. And lastly, Chris, we were able to identify with the customer that there is a speed limit on site of 20 kilometres an hour, and that's both loaded and empty. Big difference to add into the tool. Correct. Now, just running through the same table with the new information in. So, haul exchange time remains the same, as does first bucket dump, as does nine passes. But 13 second cycles, Chris, as opposed to 15. So, that's going to make a little bit of difference there. It's going to be faster. 95% full factor remains the same. Now, given that we've allowed for 20 kilometer speed limit, you can see FPC with no speed limit, two minutes 28. FPC with the 20 kilometer speed limit, it's gone, it's slowed up by over 30 seconds. Dumper maneuver remains the same. The return time, not that much difference, right? Given the fact, allowing for the fact that this is empty here. And total cycle time, you can see difference between the three options there. This is the one that I would be hanging my hat on, 10 minutes 52, and you can see some different numbers here as compared to the performance handbook and FPC. Now, going to our table, one excavator, three trucks, 90% operator efficiency, this time 10 hours, not 11, this time it's 10 hours. Assuming the three trucks, this time we're just under 5,000 tonne. Now, if you compare that to the two previous options, you can see that we are significant, significantly less than what was originally uh, prescribed or estimated for the customer. You can see the benefits of actually having been able to go onto the job site, Chris, and check real life data to get real life numbers. And, and on that, Felich, there's a couple of ways we can get that haul road information. So you used a, a handheld GPS, you could That's use right. a rover, you could use an actual design of the haul road, you could even use a drone or a UAV that surveyed that site for a, a volume um, estimate on that site. So many ways to get that haul road information in, and it really, really highlights how important that is. And I, I can also share with you and others on the phone that we can actually use Google, that Google Earth image. I can actually um, speak to the customer, he can take me to his job site and uh, we can run a meeting and he can actually um, 
show me where the whole road is and I can actually profile it through Google Earth and get a very accurate, actually, I won't be able to do inclination, but I'll certainly be able to get distance. So there's, there's another option there. All right, now, one of the benefits of FPC is that we have this tool called efficiency. And what that does, it basically tells us how many trucks this excavator can handle. And what we're looking for is this table here for the number closest to one. Anything less than one, it needs more trucks. Anything over one, you're going to over truck it and there's going to be a heap of waiting time. So you can see here that four is an optimum truck number. Now, knowing that the customer is only allowed for three because that's what he has. But if we flick over to the next table, you'll see that four trucks will actually give us an extra 1,000 tonne. Now, remember, we're at 4,958 before. Now, we're at 6,144, Chris. So we actually now have an option to go to the customer and say, look, I know you've only got three, but if you do run four, you can actually up that production by over a thousand tonne per day, per 10 and, hour day. And be more efficient in that operation too. So your overall cost per tonne will come down adding in that other truck. Correct. And this is your favourite chart, Chris. It, it is. And I think to that point, a lot of people like to add more trucks or you know, the bigger the fleet, the better. This is a really good way to visualise what that efficiency is. So you can see where Felice pointed out truck number four, we can add more trucks, but your overall output is not going to increase. So that bunching term that Felice mentioned earlier, that's going to dramatically increase. Um, trucks will bunch up, a lot more idle time, paying operators to sit in a truck that's not moving material. This is a good way to represent and say, let's stick with three or let's up that to four. Excellent. So in summary, Chris, you can see hardly any data or basic data from the customer gives us just over 5,500 tonne. Putting that basic data into FPC with no site observations, we're just over 6,000 tonne. Using the site observations with three trucks, we're now back under 5,000 tonne. And this is what I'm a lot more confident to present to the customer. But... We can also tell the customer that if you did want to go with the fourth truck, whether it be a purchase or whether it be a rental, you will increase production by over a thousand. So that would be 6,100 tonnes per day. So that's the summary, Chris. Oh, very good. Now we're over to you. Okay, so I guess some of the tools that Fleech has used, in particular the CAT cycle timer, we're just going to run through what that application is and the information it gives you. The other one is, how do you know what that product productivity is on the machine? You might have a new machine and you're wanting to do a study or wanting to know what you're currently getting. That onboard payload system helps the operators be productive, but also if you're wanting to get that estimation or how many tons you're moving, a good way to do it in the cab. But for which we've just launched a new tool, CAT Productivity, to bring that data back in, whether it's a, a tablet, a smartphone, or on your laptop a nice way to sort of track all that site information. So we'll run through that one in a live demo. Okay, so this one here, this is on the app, on the app store. So if you've got an Android phone or an Apple phone, you can download this app, no cost. Um, this is what we use when we visit sites. So Fletch would use this to get the inputs to put in that FP study, study that we just went through. This is really good whether you're doing trenching with an excavator, uh, looking at the productivity of a, of a tractor, a scraper, loading or hauling unit, really good way to sort of track down your cycle times. So it's like an electronic stopwatch that has this classified by your type of equipment, so making it very easy to use. So recommend, good one to have on your phone if you're ever visiting a site and wanting to see how things are going. We mentioned the payload systems on the equipment. So a few years ago, this wasn't so much um, standard. Now, nearly all the Caterpillar load and haul equipment has payload either standard or an option from the factory. So it makes it very easy to get your machine and have a payload system on there or a cycle system on there to track production. If you've got an older machine, I encourage you to reach out to your dealership um, because they will have some options to retrofit a payload system or a telematics device to track some of that cycle information that we have. So things like articulated trucks, uh, scrapers, uh, off-highway trucks have had payload for a long time. Um, our next-gen excavators have payload standard. So a lot of good things there. We mentioned payload for each of helping the operator. Also, you're owning an operating cost. So one we like to draw to on a sales loader, for an example, tire cost, if you call that uh, $7,000. If you're overloading 
by 20%, putting that little bit extra in the truck, that's going to overload your tyres by up to 50%. So again, overloading, some people think, hey, I'm getting more on the truck, that's great. But then the overall running cost and your cost per tonne start to increase because of your tyre life. So good one, to, good one to factor in. Again, using payload systems so you're not overloading, causing trucks to come back around, tip off, causing a delay to the other trucks in queue. Having that onboard system really increases productivity and makes the operator's life a little less stressful in that cab. And again, payload can be retrofitted to older machines, correct? Co correct. We've got a kit to, to go in back to back to G-series uh, machines for each, for wheel adders. So this is right. this new tool you're talking about? It is. So we've got this, um, and this is for quarries to start with, for each. We've focused on the quarry and aggregate industry first. And this is a tool that, like we spoke about, brings all that information together. So it's a telematics-based tool, um, requires cellular connectivity to the machines. Um, cellular connectivity doesn't have to be a live stream. As long as you can get a text message to the machine on your job site, this tool will likely work looks at the key KPI. So this isn't focused on, on the equipment health or scheduling for servicing. We've got some other great tools like my.cat.com for that. This one's purely for that site manager, the quarry manager, the owner to log in and see, are we on track? Are we meeting those targets? Um, so there's not a disconnect between what was bid in the office to what's actually happening out on site in the, in the quarry or the pit. It's all great, Chris, but how does it work? So again, for each using the same mobile phone network that your, your smartphone uses in your pockets, a lot of our machines have these standard. So we have a product link box fitted to the machine. If you have a machine that doesn't have product link or it might be a competitive machine, a different colored yellow, we can install a device on to get the key data that we need to make this solution work. So if it's a Caterpillar machine with our payload, we get a lot of really good detailed cycle information that I'll go through in a second. However, if you have an older hauling unit, it might be an old E-series truck in the quarry that's done 30,000 hours, we can, we can actually add the product link box to that. It will report location to give us those key KPIs like the load location, dump location, cycle time. So I might jump in and get a, a demo site ready for each. Okay, I'll just stop presenting here so you can take over. Okay, so let me know when you can see, see my screen. Can you see the screen in your own flash? No. no. Something's just coming. Yeah, we're good. You're good to go, Chris. Just minute. Yeah, okay. Just minimize Very good. the. Yep. So this this application here is cat productivity. And even if you don't have access today, or you want to find out some more information, if you just go to Google, put in catproductivity.cat.com, that'll take you to a landing page where there's some videos, a brochure. Um, some testimonials and some use cases on what this tool will do. So what I've landed on here for each is, is an internal um, job site that we have at Caterpillar here. We've got a view of different job sites set up around the world. So we're going to look at our um, cat productivity demo site, which is in our proving ground in Peoria. So we're going to have a look at some of the machines there. So just by clicking in, that'll take me to that job site. When I first log in, by default, it looks at the last seven days of operation and it looks at my load counts. So you can quickly hover over here without clicking or making any adjustments of how many loads you've done per day. So we can see yesterday um, we had two haulers running, total load count 57. Day before, two, 27. So simple KPIs are there. How we drive this tool for each, we've got a production tab and a utilisation tab to look at idle and working. So we're going to spend some time on the production side today. We can either look at the load counts. If the machines are fitted with payload, we can look at the payload that those trucks report. Again, these trucks are older trucks. They don't have the payload, but we've got a loading unit, a 992 in this case, that does. So we can see how many tonnes that we've done on this site. So if we wanted to look at yesterday, We can see that this wheel loader was producing 700 tonnes per hour. His cycle time, 46 seconds. Payload per cycle, 20 tonnes. So total payload for that day or that shift, um, 6,354. Wow, busy day. Busy day. So they were quite busy on the on this day for each. 
if we had multiple loading tools on the one site, it would show that. So we've seen if we've got the wheel loader here, and if we scroll down, we can see we've got an excavator that didn't run because we don't have its production numbers. On this map here, for which we spoke about uh, drones and survey images, we can actually upload a surveyed image or a image from a drone to make this more realistic for the job site. You can see I've got these dump locations here, which is this dark blue with this 118. If I click on that, that'll actually give me my individual dumps of where that machine was working. So you can see at the proving ground, we've got a bit of a face there. If I click on these, you can see at 10.21 a.m., this wheel loader picked up 20.72 tonnes. Cycle time was 41 seconds. So all this information is recorded as the machine's working with zero operator input. So that makes it easy. We're not asking the operators to do any more than just operate the machine best practice as they always do, and the machine provides this information. Now I'm assuming that where you're hovering over, they're all the same colour. Is that because they're designated that spot to be that colour? So on the, the, to the left or to the right of that? Correct, for each. So mm -hmm. if I zoom out, um, that's looking at one face. If I go back and look at the the hauling unit, so we've got some triple seven trucks here that were being loaded. You can see these lighter colour blue. That's the load, and the dark is the dump. So we can see we're loading over where that wheel loader was and we've done some dumps in this zone um, that we can have there. You also notice for each of these different coloured areas, we can draw geofences. So if we had a crusher or we had a surge pile that we wanted to keep track of production being dumped into, we can quickly and easily draw a geofence and sort of track what has gone in that other load zone. We can name that and do some simple reporting. So very easy to use for each. Another one I'll show here is the cycle time. So we mentioned the cycle time on the truck. Um, if we wanted to dive into that and further improve and see, hey, where can we improve the cycle here on these trucks? We can dive in and this will give us a breakdown of each part of the cycle. We want to look at the travel load time, make sure the whole road's in great condition and that's what we're expecting. We can we can dive into this. So we're looking at the, the loader here. Total runtime, the time that the machine has spent uh, stopped, roading time, so traveling between the sites and pile cleanup. So again, without operator input, the machine starts to track all that information and gives us a bit of a run chart throughout the day of what its KPIs are. So a handy way to get that information without um, interacting with the operator. On the utilization side for each, like a lot of telematics applications, we get an idle versus working. We've defined that a little bit different in this case by having a long idle, a medium idle, and a short one. So long is anything over nine minutes, medium six to nine, and short three to six. So rather than just saying, hey, the machine's idle 25% today, we can actually hone in and see where that might be. So again, if I click on that little tab there, I can zoom in and again, it gives me the time of the day, 11.28, this machine sat there for 32 minutes. So sounds to me, Felici could have uh, gone to lunch, left the machine running to keep the cab warm. That's good for the operator, but hey, at the end of the day, that's a lot of fuel that was wasted. Machine hours accumulating um, just for having a warm cab. And I think the important thing there is to note that there is an opportunity for improvement right there with that particular yes. truck. So we'd want to be asking that operator what happened and give them the benefit of the doubt, but obviously an area to improve. Correct. There's other parts we can do in here for each. We can replay and have a download of every single cycle if we really want to get into the detail. That's something that we might use and the dealers might use to get the most out of the site. We've all go, also got a part of this application which will replay a cycle. So if we wanted to look at a certain time of the day, whether there was an incident, whether we wanted to see the haul road route or the location the wheel loader was working in, we can actually open in and this will replay um, the machine and how it was working on the site. So if I zoom in here, you'll see the excavator. I chose the excavator in this case. Um, you can see where he was working. What other assets were interacting with that machine at that point in time? Fantastic. So, Excellent. Again, so, and what if, what if, like, how would 
how would someone get started with this, Chris? What 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 would be the way that, like, say, there's a I can see we've got a customer online at the moment. What what how would they, if they're interested in this, what would their next step be? Um, best step would be reach out to their local cat dealer rep. Um, within the dealerships, there's technology specialists that have been trained and have been uh, using this solution for some time now. They could reach out to those. We've actually got a program. We work with the dealers to give customers um, a try of this solution. So dealers have the details on that. But if anyone's wanting to try this, please reach out to your dealer um, and take that next step. And we're happy to um, see you using this application in the future. Fantastic. Thanks for that, Chris. You got anything else to show us there? Because I can see that we don't have any questions. So if we, here's an opportunity if you have some questions to just to just take. Um, I type them down the bottom and we can try and address them as best we can. Maybe show us something else, Chris, before we say thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so to this support uh, loading types, whether it's a, an excavator, a large wheel loader, uh, our scrapers, all that information reports in. We're looking to add further models. Obviously, the trucks we uh, support. Again, if your machine doesn't have payload or it doesn't have a um, onboard cycle counting system, just by feeding the product link device on with cellular coverage, we can get some good KPIs to help improve um, job site efficiency. Excellent, thank you. Just checking to see right. if we've got any questions there, Chris. Doesn't look like we have any questions in there, mate. You got anything else for us? Otherwise, we might just say thank you and close this one down. Yeah, I think um, I thank everyone's time. And if there's any further questions, please reach out to your Caterpillar dealership and they'll put you in the right direction of getting some further information. Um, but again, thanks for your time this afternoon, Felice. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. And as always, Angeline, thank you for your time. A lot of information was shown here today. You do have lots of resources within the dealerships, uh, the Caterpillar dealerships through the ANZ region. So please don't hesitate to reach out to them if you require further information. So once again, thank you everyone for taking the time out of your busy day to dial in. We certainly appreciate it. Please stay safe. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. All right.